Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint the lovely rooster you probably clicked on in the thumbnail. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. So how this works is during the video, I'm going to explain every technique, every color mix, every process. On top of that, I have a lot of bonus resources. I have mini books which are written out instructions that match the video that come out seven to ten days after the show. I bookmark and timestamp the video so you can find your spot again. Um, we also break these down into steps. Uh, there is a lot of extra technical information as John tries to find a location for me in this cute rooster. There are moderators that are here during the live stream and um, I answer questions after. So if you like painting and you were like, I really want to do this painting, but um, I don't know why John feels like he's just swing around the screen at all. <laughs> I'm almost getting dizzy. Uh, if you like painting and you'd like to do this painting, this particular lesson is the one that you need. All right, shall we get started, sir? Oh, really? You want to like do something here now? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So um, I'm going to go over the materials kind of quick verbally, and then you're also going to see a screen. But I'd like to cover one of the things we do on our show first, which is the wishes. So on this 8 by 8 surface, stretch canvas, I have some wishes for the community. Um, for Sherry, uh, wishes for relief in mind and body. Uh, Candy to have a great surgery and good news at the end of the surgery. Stephanie, who's feeling like that plate juggling is a little much, maybe to have a little mindfulness and centering in her life. Carolyn, recovery from COVID and relief. And then also, it sounds to me based on the wish that, you know, listening and support and answers around why she's still feeling bad. And then Marion, uh, healing and heart health for her husband. Mm. So those are the wishes on today's canvas. Uh, just real quick, the paint is phthalo green, Mars black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, uh, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, titanium white, and the brushes. And again, you're going to have a graphic, so you can say that there are a half inch angle, a three quarter angle, monogram liner, my TS4 round, my number six uh, hog round, and my cat's tongue, this is physically what they are. But you can, and, and often will, use different brushes than me. So this is me just telling you. It's in the description. It's on the website. It's in the mini book. But again, it's just a guide to make your painting experience better. Let's show them the graphic, just in case that visual aid is helpful. Let's see here. Look at you. You're in the graphic, too. I'm in the graphic. I need to move over. There are 13 steps, and we're going to be doing step one here. So you can see what our goal is for step one and where we're going. This is fantastic. And the only color we're going to be using is burnt sienna, which we can handle. We know where that was. That was right here on the palette, the burnt sienna. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sketch in our rooster. Let's see if I can do this. Sketching it in. Do, do, do. All so right. Many buttons. Push, push this button. So many buttons. And then maybe this button. <gasps> Look, you have a rooster. To All draw. right. I'm going to use my half inch angle to sketch this in. All right. Is that's not it? Am I? Uh, Small synthetic extra. Okay, I'm going to use my, yes, my small angle here. Okay? okay. And I'm just going to use this to sketch because it doesn't need to be that specific of a drawing. If you don't want to draw, I have a traceable and it's free to download. You don't have to join anything or do anything. I don't even think you have to become a membership member of our website, but you should because it's free. You should member our website. Now let's come in here and kind of just talk about scales. So right about the middle bottom here. I'm going to make a little mark just to say, I feel like my chicken feathers will be ending somewhere here. And up at the top from the right-hand side, I'm going to come down an inch or two and put a little mark there to give myself a sense of what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to give myself a little stopping point, at least two fingers over for where I have the beak. These are points of entry and exit into the canvas. And they're points to know where I'm going to stop my drawing. Painting drawing is so different than regular drawing. Oh, I like that reference. That's good for me too, John. Painting drawing is so different than regular drawing because it's more about just the outer lines and the basic shape of an object, not so much its detail. There. I'm going to come here, and uh, we've got this nice little beak, so I'm going to sketch in a little beak. Come back about an inch. You can see a little curve, and then I like to have a little curve in my beak. Come back here on the bottom. I know this comes back a bit. There we go. My birds tend to be a little judgy. And oh, here's another interesting thing. You know, I'm going to be very general about um, the the crown at first. And that's just because, you know, I, you, I, you don't really know until you know. I'm going to bring this down here. 
There we go. Come over here and just kind of give myself a little feather guide off here because I know I'm going to add the comb, right? There's a little bit of a comb. And you can kind of look, you want at least something a little bigger than a, a AAA egg there for the mm. face. That's what you're kind of going for, right? And this is just if you're drawing. And then I'm going to just say I've got a comb here. And the reason I'm so general about where that comb is and the other comb is because I probably will be painting the background kind of into that space. So these lines just remind me that it exists. It exists. Right? I like to come into my drawing a bit and then, um, you know, uh, paint over it. So that's a way that it's different. I see Lulabelle is here with the wrench helping out and Jen Butterfly is saying hi. Mary Myers! Uh, and Mary's like, I need more practice drawing with my paintbrush. That's why we have drawing class in the patronage. If you're in the patronage, check out the rose challenge I dropped. It's really for after Monday's rose lesson, but I think you guys will be inspired. Like, that's the goal. That's what we're going for. I'm it's, kind of excited. It's Kelly's uh, birthday. Whose birthday? Kelly. Kelly, happy birthday. It's your birthday. Paint a painting. It's, it's your, your birthday. birthday. Paint a painting. So I'm going to let you look at this. I might pull in the feathers just a bit. Um, and the reason for that, I would pull those in just a bit, is so that I can bring the background in and then fluff feathers out. Because I want my feathers so. to be delicately and fluffed out. So kind of, sometimes I put those lines in a bit. All right. Barbara Ray is saying hi. And Rebecca Hoffman has just reached custom emoji chat 15 months. I wish I had a new emoji to give everybody. Hmm. I got to go it, in there and see if it's, it, I'm going to, for all can, of you, I'm going to update the year people to a new emoji because so many of you are over a year. I got to give you a new thing. We can the emojis you need a new we unicorn. have. We could like just new, new versions of old emojis. Yeah. Let's three, do them all for everybody who's, let's, let's <laughs> boot them and do them new. Except for Twix and, and, okay. and, and, and so, uh, Turkey. Let's see here. You're no longer using the ankle brush. I am. No. Okay. So let's go on to the next step. Wait. So you want to go on to the next Next step. All right. So I was like, I did not have prepared for that. And then I'll go to here and then we'll go <gasps> step. Oops. Not I don't see. Uh, okay. So there we go. I'm going to be using, I remember this. The bigger <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to be coming here and I'm going to be using my three quarter angle brush. Um, this is a very firm filament and I like the angle angle because it gives me an edge. You could use a bright though or a different brush. It's just a good brush to paint in a large area. You are using and that's what I'm gonna do. And that mix is going to be of a burnt sienna, a Mars black, and a titanium white. That's what we're gonna Oh Heather, thank you. A burnt sienna, a Mars black, and a titanium white. It's okay if your colors are a little different than mine. Okay, I'm gonna get my brush lightly damp and I'm gonna just mix together. Kind of one to one at first. Let's do this together. A little bit of this deep chocolate color with our Mars black and burnt sienna. I right, got a nice deep color. I'm going to come in and go right over my watercolor wishes. I did those with a watercolor pencil. You don't have to do wishes in your canvas. You can wish along with me, or you can do prayers, or you can do nothing because that's your preference. It's completely okay. It's your canvas. It's your room. It's your studio. You should do what makes you happy. I'm going to continue to come here. And I'm just brushing that out. And you guys can see, like, sometimes I might mix a little more black in there. And I'm very rough and irregular in my brush stroke. Look how I'm brushing across. Now, this is getting it all into my canvas. I use canvas like what you use. So if you go to Michael's and you buy the pack 8 by 8s um... I don't treat mine or process mine or do anything so that you can see me having the experience you might be having at home. Just coming along. This is all still pretty wet. I can add some more just bright burnt sienna in here. And then on occasion, I might get a little white into the mix. See that? Mm. My brush strokes is like brushing down and then up sometimes and across. That's what's happening. It looks fast. It goes fast, but that's what's going on. I'll brush. I'll go into my beak a little bit more than I need to. He's going to get a beak out of me. Mm. But then I'll come back and add more beak. <laughs> you may want to paint around the sides of your surface so you don't have to frame. A lot of people do that. Beakoplasty. Uh, 
Sherry Wilson, hello all. YouTube uses Greenwich Mean Time as the start time, so I figure to so figure out our distance. Eastern time zone is five hours behind. So, Sherry, uh, YouTube should set the start time to your clock. It should. It's supposed to set it, it to your clock, but I always start on Eastern Standard Time, and my time is one p.m. Yeah. So unless stated differently on uh, the video. Remember that computers are just dumb robots. They really so. are. Like, they only do literal translation of instructions. So and I... honestly, sometimes YouTube just resets my clock for me. Like, I put the video up and it resets it. However, that is what it is supposed to do is start it in your time zone. So you're not supposed to have to have to do clock math for it. No, it's supposed to. But sometimes computers don't do that. <laughs> Even from multi-billion dollar companies and corporations, right? Oh. May was saying, um, I noticed she's using yellow ochre in this one. I don't have that. Uh, I don't know what she told us to make it, or if someone can tell me, please. All right, let's talk about if you have this palette with me and you don't have yellow ochre, how would you make it? When I finish this step, okay. here's what, stay with me. Here's the answer. If you're here and you don't have yellow ochre and you have these other colors and you need to make something similar, we're going to make it at the end of this step, okay. and then you won't have to worry about that. Because I'm awesome like that. Indeed. Great question. I'm adding a little more black down here, maybe in this corner, trying to give some variance. We got time today. We're going to have a nice relaxing paint, so don't feel any pressure. I'm the only one who should feel pressure. Right? You shouldn't feel pressure. You should come and have a nice relaxing paint. Coming along the beak a little bit. Again, you can see I've trimmed it in a lot. Now, now he's had a real beak, but I'm going to put the beak back out there when I go to paint it. Sometimes I like to come back, give myself some room for feathers, for delicate bits. Just so that we can get those little tendrils going. All right. So. If I didn't have yellow ochre and all I had was cad yellow, cad red, quinacrylone magenta, titanium white, and Mars black, what I probably would do is take a little of my burnt sienna. And go mix that. Can you guys see that on the palette? Yeah, I think so. So why use yellow ochre? As you see, this very easy mix of uh, burnt sienna and cad yellow making yellow ochre uh, hue, not the actual pigment, the hue. So this is a pigment, which means it comes from the earth in this color, and it will mix up, it will mix without any unexpected biases and stuff. So sometimes that's very nice. Um, it's also called a convenience color, right? Because you can mix any color from primary. So whenever you buy a tube of paint that isn't a primary, you're making your life more convenient, convenience color. Um, I really like yellow ochre. Uh, yellow ochres can be different from set to set. You know, so I'll add some, oh, I got some black into that. So see, you're going to get some nice little colors. I just got a little black. I want to test that out so you can see that. So I've got my mixed yellow ochre. Add some white into it. See, no problems there. You're going to get a good cream. Just a little small difference between the two. See, when you add white to it, not enough to impact your painting in a negative way. And I'm going to start doing that if I have a color because the quinacridone uh, uh, gold, which was quinacridone, it's on my store if you need to buy the golden version of it. The whole by one sold out. Um, you know, I'll show you how to mix those colors if we get an unexpected color because there's no need for you to worry. This is all art. As long as I've got my background in. All right. And maybe the moderators can make a note of where I mixed yellow ochre and I can put that in the timestamps there. Ooh, um, yeah. And I'll, I, I'll put something up maybe on the webpage after, make it easy. Seems good. Yeah, everything for you guys. I'm here for you because I love you. All right. <sighs> Let's sip our coffee. You think you're ready for another step? I think I'm ready to sip my coffee and have another step. Oh, we could probably do the simultaneous thing. See, look at you. You're in a step. Oh, I kind of know where we're going. <laughs> step three. Step three. All right, kind of what I expected. For the feathers to really pop on this piece, like if you look at this right here, this is what we're doing. 
today? Yep. Isn't that gorgeous? It is. To get that depth of color here, you'll notice in here, and I don't know if John can get up close. I can. Thank you, Karen. Um, if you get up in there up close, do you see that depth of color coming through the paint? Okay. Sometimes as a new artist, you would think that these little bumps and things aren't desirable, but they're actually quite desirable because there is the color that we mix, but there's also color that we mix with our eyes right. and our brains, and that's what's happening there. And that depth really adds dimension to our painting. So that is why you might want to do this next part, which is to do kind of an underpainting. Oh. Hmm. It explains something. I've got the, let me fix up. The reference picture is supposed to be square, not. What have you been doing with it? Well, it was a little off square. <laughs> Were you making it squished? It was a little squished. Sorry. There we go. Better. On my videos from 2021 on, full tutorial lessons like this tend to have a thing called a mini book, and that is everything I used, every technique, every mix written out at each step with a picture back with that it really angle. makes an awesome difference for like your experience so in this step i'm going to be using yellow ochre burnt sienna and mars black to kind of make a uh under base color so i'm going to take a little burnt sienna and yellow ochre and a smidge of mars black and you can see that here And we're going to put that depth in. If you if you were doing this and you didn't have the yellow ochre, you would just use the mix that you made. Now, I have a question for you. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you're a super fan. Mm -hmm. and you have Thank painted, you for being a super fan. You've painted a bazillion D of the paintings that you have taught. Yes. A bazillion would, D is a very specific super fan. Where would one share the bazillion D paintings with you so you could see them? So many places to share with me, guys. Um, the first place that you can share with me is on the website. You can post a picture under any of the videos uh, that you did of it. The next best place you can share with me is if you do a tutorial, you can go to Facebook, and I have a private group, the Art Sherpa Official, and you can share in there, and you can also share on the Art Sherpa page on Facebook. If you're on Instagram, you could tag me in, hashtag the Art Sherpa on Instagram. If you're on TikTok, you can make a TikTok. Sometimes you can even do that with me, and I look for those. If talk. you're on um, Pinterest, you can do a pin. And if you're on Twitter, you can tweet me. Nope. I see more tweets than anything else because I'm not good at Twitter. So I don't have enough Twitter followers to make it hard for me to see things in the feed. You know who you're never going to see on Twit on TikTok? Hmm. Captain Hook. Why? Oh! <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Wow. Just, man. All I'm going to say here is sometimes painting brain. I think I'm going to curve this down with my background color. I have to say Hook in the 90s was one of my favorite movies. Yeah? Yeah. I did. Robin Williams was one of my favorite actors. I'm not going all the way into here. I'm just kind of bringing this in a little bit. Just going some of the way? And I might use my brush strokes to kind of talk about the directionality of the feathers. That means the direction that they grow so that later when I come in, I can make a nice thing. Lulabelle says, I pin the Sherpa often. I love Pinterest. I'm pintastic. I'm pin obsessed. I just did two new pins. I did a video of a drawing of a rose. And then I did the cow, and I'm going to put up the chicken later. I like to do story pins, and I like to do video pins, but I also like to do straight pins. And I've been on Pinterest forever. And I actually, everyone knows, like, I have a following on YouTube, but I actually have a pretty big Pinterest following. <laughs> like, we're over there having a whole moment, if you like Pinterest. I do things. Are you there? I'm me? Am I here? Are you here? I I'm just wondering um, what we've got going on. Let me check. Are you um, on a step thinking, you're thinking? We need a step, and then I got to look over on, I don't know, I don't have, right. I have Skype here. I got to look for questions uh, from the shows on do, Facebook do, do, do. and. Look at that. We're on step four. I got to catch up to where we are. I got to do that thing. You know, I'm supposed to do that thing where it takes me down to the bottom. Does it? Is it? All right. Uh, today, uh, we were asked, uh, no, that, yeah. 
um, that Sydney H. was told to email about issues and I'm having joining painting. I haven't gotten an email back. I'm wondering if it went through correctly. I was hoping to join in time for drawing classes. Hmm. Um, all the drawing classes remain up. Um, so you can go back on old ones and challenges remain up. And then um, I've said that out loud. So I know my patrons, uh, my moderators will go look and see if they can find Sydney H.'s message. Uh, right. Kelly, good afternoon. Where do I find the traceable? On the website. Under the traceables tab. Where's the website? www.theartsherpa.com. Are you from the 90s? Because you still have www in your website domain. Yes. It's from the worldwide. It's from the worldwide web. I don't care. W, w, w. I like. I have to do things to upset my kids. Um, the W is. Amy says I look blank and adorable, <laughs> and loving <laughs> the uh, heart shirt and necklace and. Uh, Oh, you know what? No. Karen is letting me know that I'm answering questions from last weekend. Never mind. All right. Well, there you go. <sighs> I go to look for, like, questions in the chat, and it wasn't even <laughs> done. <laughs> Woo! All right. We have a chat step. up here. We have we a have... chat here, and I, if somebody asked. We're here. Look, We're here. Up, like, up here, and you can see right here. You can see yourself. Doo -doo -doo. And look. Mm -hmm. There's there's the graphic and stuff. Let's do the step. Did we do the step? We did it. All right. Let's We're move on, on to the step. next step. You're We're going to be putting next... in more stuff. We already have your next graphic step thing loaded there. So you've got your own reference of this step you're doing. All right. This step is going to be pretty chill. This is going to be cadmium red and Mars black. We're going to be using our smaller angle. And we're going to just sort of paint in around it all the stuff here. All the waddly stuff. So let's use our smaller angle brush this time to do it. This is, we're still, look, I have a thing that says angle. Angle brush. But did you not see it yet? Because it's behind your thing. It's behind my chat, so I can't see it. See? Right there. All right. See, angle. Uh, Michael Art says, I appreciate everything that you said of encouragement. And I appreciate you, Michael. And I appreciate that you are being creative. It's an important thing to do in this world. Let's get our CAD red out. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to add just a smidge of my Mars black to deepen it. I'm just get deepening it a little bit. Deepen it just a little bit. I'm just making short little brush strokes out. And I'm filling in kind of all this little area. All right. Get back to what I was. If there's no questions, and I'm going to get back to what I was doing over here. There was comments. All right. Everyone appreciates them. They like the name of the brush that we're using in the corner. The name of the brush that we're using? Yep. I've I got, you know, because it says that we're using an angle brush. And they can see that. And then they know, and they don't have to ask. <laughs> like, what brush? Are, oh, wait. There it is. <laughs> well, we're trying to do that more. Um, I'm trying to capture more of what I'm doing during the design process. And then uh, the mods and John are trying to help me uh, get that more integrated into, say, the show during the show. Come down and add just a little bit of red to the waddle. As you do. Got a little waddle. Yeah, we're just painting that in. We're doing great. You're doing great. You can do this. Now, on the upper head, the comb of the rooster, we're going to do a sh kind of a short little bit of a comb. Make a little triangle. And then I'm going to add a little bump on the nose because, you know, it builds up there. Making the little points. This one's much taller. I love roosters. Mm. Somebody had said after seeing this, I should have done this with sunflowers, and now I think I have to do a white one with sunflowers, Ooh, or another, fun. or a different bird with sunflowers, just like something. A variation on this clucker. <laughs> variation on some. 
All right, let's uh, give another little. I'm going to come back here. Even though we know flowers are going to be here, I'm going to still cover it and paint it. And that is going to be great. All right. Wow, that came together pretty fast. All right, Salita Fink says, I love you and thank you for these videos. You're totally the reason I started painting. You gave me the confidence and the step-by-step -step directions to enable me to be a great painter. Thank you. I love that you said great painter. That makes me feel really good. Okay, now um, on the next step, da -da 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 -da, Look at that. we're going to start your... the beak. You see we're going to begin materials? the beak. Hmm? Yes, yes. cadmium, red medium, cadmium yellow, titanium oh. white, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. I have it here too. I wanted to make sure I pushed the buttons too fast. So you got all the materials. Right. I'm going to use my, even though it's barely on the market anymore, my TS round, but I think I want to dry this so I can paint the eye and not drag red paint everywhere. Yeah. So can you mute me for a second while I dry it? Sure. I bring, thank you. So she's going to give that a quick dry. And so that uh, we can have easy painting over this layer, which is what you kind of want. You want it to be, you know, how can, and so when you're doing it thoroughly dry, that'll help prevent uh, lifting and uh, other problems so that when you don't, you don't want the, the colors to mix or blend with each other. So it's good just to make sure you get thoroughly dry during some of those steps. Okay. Okay. You, I would love a coffee warm up, and I have to read Lynn uh, Robertson's uh, joke. What does a chicken use when it sneezes? Mm. I don't know. I have to wait for the answer. Okay. Hi, Amethyst. Oh, and I see May, Supernatural Investigator, and Joni Simmons. What about a duck with sunflowers? There was a poll on this video to help me pick, and it was duck, sheep, goat, and pig. And then YouTube made it go away, and I don't know what the answer was. So I'm very, I'm very stressed out. So in the comments after the show, just let me know if you want to paint a duck, a sheep, a goat, or a pig with flowers on its head to continue on the barn theory. Um, uh, Michael Art, you should do sunflowers. I've been seeing a lot of people doing sunflowers. I'm kind of reminded of Vincent Van Gogh because the words made him famous after he died. That's true. Oh my goodness. So I've got my little round here. I'm going to use the TAS number for round. What you're looking for in round is just a nice point. I'm going to be mixing a yellow ochre. I'm going to be mixing a little burnt sienna into it, a little titanium white. No, I think on this one, I'm sorry. And uh, maybe a little cad yellow in there. That's what we're going to be kind of working through all them colors. If you only have one or the other, it's okay. We're just trying to create a nice little beige. So let's begin with a little of the Mars black and the yellow ochre and titanium white. We get kind of a cream going. Look at that right there. It's not a beet color if there was ever a beet color. Now this is where I might come in and kind of re- Draw the beak. You guys see that there where I'm elongating it? John tell sure it's a hen kerchief. <laughs> so if you heard the joke earlier, the answer is a hen kerchief. And kind of curve that beak down a tip on the nose there. They can't see that. They can't. I, it looked like they could see it. Oh, there we go. I was like, it seemed like they could see it, so I was. Could see a little bit. Okay. All right. Fantastic. <sighs> little bells. Like we've done some pigs. It's true. I got a lot of pigs. I actually have a playlist now for like animals from the farm, because I've done so many. I've done barns and just farm themed paintings. You run warm your coffee up. Let me continue just paint on this beak here. So I'm adding this sort of like cream color. Kind of curving that there. This is a first layer, so it doesn't have to be super perfect. 
I'm going to get my little black in and I'm going to come underneath the beak. I'm going to bring that back. Just a little tipping. And then maybe a little, a little bit on the nose there. A little streaking back. Notice it's very light though, right? Get a little more yellow ochre on there. Just kind of give some dimensionality. Now, sometimes I will come back with my background color, which if you remember was the Mars black and the burnt sienna. And then I will clean up around an object like my beak. Add a little titanium went into it. You can kind of just blend that in there. See, so sometimes what we do is we also might clean up around there, right? Now I've got an eye. I've got to put it. All right. Speaking of stay wet palette, I'm going to miss my palette. Uh, a great joke came in on Facebook. I ordered an egg and a chicken online, and I'll let you know which one comes first. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. While John is getting his coffee, uh, it looks like so, uh, I might have some updates on the show questions, which is super good. Or not. Live show questions. All right. No live show questions. And I just dropped my brush. Went way down on the floor. Guess what I have to pick up a brush? I have a little a little hand clampy thing. So I don't have to bend down. Not that bending down isn't super good for you. But my little robot hand is super, super useful. John will be horrified that I'm doing this while he's gone. So don't tell him. I got it. <sighs> All right. No updates on the live show questions. Okay, uh, back to the chat. Um, where we were at? Over here. Oh, LOL the bug. Okay, uh, I'm going to continue to add a little white to my mix. My beak's okay. I went and visited the live show questions, but nothing yet. Now we're going to come back here and add a little bit of an eye. I'm going to use a, a bit of this same kind of like uh, beak color, believe it or not, to do the eye. And I'm going to come up here above this line here to about right there in the face, right? Kind of right along this line in the beak where the, crow the comb comes forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to... A little upper arc. And a little downward arc. Mm. And if I like that placement, I'm going to look at that. <laughs> Cinnamon, what is a robot hand? Oh, I guess it's not really a robot. It's a... It's a, it's gripper. a gripper arm. It's a gripper arm. My mom said it for me because she loves her so much. And, it and she drops stuff on the show, then she can pick it up. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow and my cad red together. I'm going to make some just fast orange and kind of do that first layer of the chicken eye. Ready player layer one. Looks pretty good. So, Facebook, I want you guys to know that I love you and I see you. And I appreciate you being here to watch today. Uh, I do too. All right. There we go. We got that step in. Wow. You stepped and it we up. could cook through this faster, but I want you guys to feel like you can paint along in a little more relaxed way today. If I like, I should put a chicken wing on it. Yeah. Don't forget to thumbs up. You thumbs up. Him? If you're on Facebook, share, share, share the video. Uh, leave me comments below. Feel free to share your paintings in the video. Uh, here, definitely leave me a comment of what we want to paint next. Mm-hmm. All right, ready to step? All right, I think I am ready to step. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, these are the colors. I can kind of guess what I'm coming back to, but let's find out. Yes. That one here. 
Yep, I'm gonna work on the waddle, which means I am moving to this round brush. Now this is a hog filament in there, right? So the one I used previously had a synthetic filament. You can kind of see the difference between, it's very smooth, it's got a point. This is a little bit rough. These brushes all come in expensive and inexpensive options. If you do the natural hog, you just wanna wash your brush thoroughly before using. Mm-hmm. And come here. And I'm going to be using cadmium yellow, cadmium red, quinacridone magenta, some titanium white, and sometimes some Mars black. And the basic mix is going to be cad red and quinacridone magenta. That's the basic start. Okay, here we're going. Basic waddle color. Cut to waddle. Cut to waddle. All right, so we're going to come here and we're going to start to really brighten up this like little waddle. I'll come through here. There's this wonderful bit of a shadow that happens under the, the chicken's head that I really, really like. Sherpa soap, best brush cleaner ever. Karen, it is the best. Like, seriously, it is the best. Nobody makes any acrylic soap like what we make. And that's why we make it. Because I can't buy it. I can buy good oil soap and I can buy good watercolor soap, but not soap specifically for acrylic or acrylic brushes. I'm gonna come back here and add a little bit of uh, wiggle to my waddle. Mm, that's always good to have. Waddle wiggle. I'm gonna I need think a little waddle wiggle. Good hens look for waddle wiggle. I mean, you know, they do, right? We're gonna be just at this for a second, you know, just kind of working our waddle. <laughs> And you can see that this adds some depth. But notice that I'm not like painting over all the original layer, right? Mm, I'm going to have a little bit of a sneeze or burp or something. Okay, I'll mute you. You're muted. You can make all the noise you want. I can even make you disappear. Look at this. Boop! No more Sherpa. All right. Let me know when you're done making your human noises. I blew okay. my nose in everybody's go. ear last, like... Like during that one show I did with Honey, and I'm just trying not to do that again today. I'm going to continue here and start to really kind of think about this waddle with this little round brush. You can see, changing that shape a bit. Adding that bit of brightness in the color. Just quinacridone magenta and cad red medium. Light little touches in the brush stroke. Okay, sometimes I can get a little bit of my uh, cad red and cad yellow together. Maybe put a little bit of that right there at the front of that beak. Yeah. Kind of come here at the front of this. Um, this is kind of see it's a bright, private color. Vibrant. Vibrant. A little more cat right into that. A little highlight up here, kind of in the center of the beak. We're kind of creating a rounded shape by... If we add highlights in the center of this, and then we have shadows here, and we have some shadow here, a shadow here, and then through here in the folds, it starts to create shape to the waddle. Oh, that yeah. is the dance we are doing. And you know what I forgot to add to the farm animal, John? Goose. Uh... What was duck, it? Duck, duck, goose. I forgot to add a goose oh, when I was trying to think of farm animals. Donkey. Oh, I need donkey. There's not enough donkey. It's sort of like not enough cow ball. I'm going to add more quinacridone magenta here. And now I'm going to get a little bit of uh, Mars black. Can you guys see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I'm going to start to shade down this wattle. Sometimes you have to get your brush a little bit wet. Remember, the paint can start to dry on the brush. So every once in a while, you have to rinse out regardless. Yep. You can come here and add a little bit of a shading to the wattle there. Shadow. Shadow wattle. And comb. I can always come back with a little bit of cataract and look, blend this in. Mm -hmm. This this the dance. Trying to create shadow here, rolling into you know a more highlighted space. And come in with like a little cut an acro magenta there a little bit, kind of deepening that. Roll that off here. All right. Now I'm going to get a bit of my quinacridone magenta, a little cad red in Mars Black, and I'm going to come in and make sure that we've got a second. Our waddle. Mm -hmm. It's waddle in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> That's how real it is for us here. Where we paint, we get waddle in perspective. Don't we, sir? Yeah. Got some little shadows there. I love to just play with it. This is the fun part. Mm. Now, I can get my cad red and my quinacridone magenta together. And if you add a little titanium white, oh, the color. Isn't that great? It is. More cad red into it. If you get more cad red, then it tends to go a little coral. A little highlight. And you can see I'm just touching the brush up and down. I'm not trying to It'd be very irregular. If I need more flow, I just add a little water to my brush. Be careful with uh, hog brushes when you add water because they can really soak it up. And if they do, you just wipe them off. And add a little more cad red there. So what you're going to see me doing is like dancing through the colors, right? Trying to catch the light and dark of the value. Hmm. How light is it? How dark is it in value? And what hue is it? A little more white. A little more cad red. Maybe the front hair a little bit. I also made notes. So I'm just trying to make sure that I've felt like paying attention to my own notes. Mm. I mean, paying attention to my own notes. A little orange there. See how every time you add a little bit of something, it changes it just some? Yeah. You find that space, and then you, and you're like, oh, I see you, but let's add a little. Just cut here and kind of. Back into the white. If I take a little white into the quinacridone magenta, I can even kind of think about adding that highlights to that. Woo! There we go. We're still waddling. Let's waddle along. 
You did. I heard it. Little cad red, but more magenta this time in the mix. Whew. Aqua Bro might be able to breathe underwater, but I can't breathe under coffee. <sighs> I'm just making sure there's shape, see? See? Shape to the waddle. Yeah. And just lots of color. There there's so many reflections. There's so much happening. And even before I put all the feathers in, even before I put all the dimensionality in, you know, it's important, right, to capture some of that. I read something about, like, okay, yeah, that's where it was. May said when she was younger, uh, a little lighter version there, her family lived on a farm that had 3,000 chickens. There's too many chickens. That's a Chicken too many army. chickens. That's an army of chickens is what that is. It really is. Cause, because, in, and you'll know this, Aunt May, uh, chickens are not always friendly. I had my eye plucked by Rhode Island Red. Pecked me right in the eye because it saw my little pupil moving around and it thought, that's a bug. I'm going to peck it. It wasn't even mad or anything. It was just burden. We only had like a dozen chickens. And then the coyotes, no, it was the raccoons came, and then we had one very stressed out chicken. I am chicken free. You are chicken free. My kids really want Sounds chickens. They want chicken. uh, they want the Brahmin chickens really bad. I tell you, if I'm gonna get a chicken, I'm gonna get a peacock. That is the chicken I would get. So our chicken. I am not enjoying my neighbor. Or maybe and um I think about getting a peacock because I am not enjoying my what, neighbor. <laughs> what about ostriches? Uh, Pet ostrich. Uh, they're dangerous. I know. But like, you could be like, uh, gosh, what are they called? King Cobra? Man. Are these right? I didn't chicken. have a shoe no. bill. Oh, shoe bill, man. That, that's, that's not a bird. That's a predator that's a Step away from being a prehistoric monster. A little bit. They're super friendly. Apparently, like, it's... The shoebill's bill as big as your head. And it stands as tall as a man. Like, six foot tall. It's like... A little bit of red here. There's girls that are that tall, too. But just, you know, this big is as tall as a person. A tall person. <laughs> so sorry. It's tall for a tall human. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of my magenta on here and kind of come up over my eye. You should paint the shoe bill. I should. I love shoe bills. Peacock is a pheasant. A little black and white in there. That may be true, but it would be my. I, I would call it my singing chicken. <laughs> You'd call it your singing chicken? It's my singing chicken. So I'm not enjoying my neighbor. My neighbor does some really weird and creepy things. Constantly? And constantly, <laughs> and it's freaking me out so much. And I'm just like, you keep doing this, it's going to be bees and peacock all day and maybe <laughs> bamboo. Just... Uh, freaking out. It's a pea fowl. Pea fowl. Pea fowl. Ah, ah, yep. Yep. See, in order to get a proper uh, pea fowl chorus, I think you need to have, you know, a dozen <laughs> or so. No, you do not want a dozen. And, and, you know, you they think gotta, you do, but you do not. And then they got to live in relatively close quarters so that you can make sure that they get that, you know, they can get the cannon going where, you know, they one starts and then the next one goes and the next one goes. They get, the, they get their rolling cannon of song. I feel like I really waddled as much as I can waddle. Have you? Yeah, I think I've waddled and I need another stupid heat up. All right, we'll do that. Let's see here. Oh, so get a skunk for a pet for your, for your neighbor to see it. 
me go back over here and make sure I'm on. All right, I got the next step loaded right. Here we go. Doot, 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 doo. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, titanium white, and Mars black are going to be our colors. I think we're doing the next layer of feathers. All right. All right, we are. We're doing like some detail feathers. What brush are you going to use here? I'm going to be using the round and the cat's tongue. Okay, which one first? I'm going to leave you with the round. I think uh, these two I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this one first and then this one. What do you think of that? And we're back say that into word. our feather colors. I got that's a filbert. Right? Hmm? That's a filbert? Oh, it's a pointed filbert. I think I have a cat tongue in the in the graphic, but I did not load that. You could use a filbert. I'll use a filbert today, but next time I'll have cat's tongue. Well, and the thing about the problem with the cat's tongue is not that there's anything wrong with the brush, right? It's that a lot of them are too soft to use for this purpose. Mm. I'm getting a little water in this mix. Yellow ochre, Mars black, little burnt sienna, titanium white. Let me give you a mute there for a second. You okay, you cleared yourself. But... Okay, now you're back. You know, it's hard to do that live thing where you're being live all the time. <laughs> it just so is. Oop, nope, by the way, there you go. All right, we're going to just kind of come here and... You know I'll go right off the page a little bit with that first layer. This chicken seems to be saying, look deeply in my eye. eye. <laughs> like a vampire chicken looking to... Oh, we're just spending a nice Saturday together. I'm going to go do coffee. See, I'm I'll flicking this, how I'm coming along the brush. I'm working the edge of the brush, and I'm flicking out. I'm getting that little feather effect. You could do that with the rounds. You could do that with the bright. It's just about layering. I need to get a couple guineas. <laughs> it's just not my favorite. <sighs> I'll tell you what I did get. I get a bunch of nests that are pointed everywhere. That's what I did. I may end up in one of those TikTok compilations of like crazy neighbors doing crazy things. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to add. The Mars black a little bit into that and then continue to add the white. And even as we're here, right, and we're going to be delicate through here, remember there's going to be some flowers here. So you've got a little bit of um, give and leeway in this area. <sighs> Oh, it's hot, 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 hot. Hot, 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 hot. I'm going to put a little feather going forward. Look at this. I'm flicking this forward a little bit on the toe of the brush, and that kind of gives that little feather effect, doesn't it? It does indeed. I really dig painting chicken waddle. I'm going to just say it to you right now, I dig it. I am leaving, if you remember earlier, how we were leaving that deep to show through. And I got to do that. Now I'm going to switch to my round. Uh, Charlotte Vandenberg says, it's amazing how you teach us more techniques. Those techniques. I love it. Here's what. If I teach you the techniques and the terms and the concepts, eventually, just do your own stuff. Make an artist. I am. Future artist. Happening right now. You're cooking and brewing into future artists or already are artists and just hanging out. That's what we need. More artists in the world. That's what I've decided. Huh. Have I ever seen silky chickens? They are unreal looking. I have, and I have one saved. And it may come up in a particular month soon. <laughs> I don't know that that. There, that's what you're doing. I forgot to increment forward your little reference picture. Round. Sorry. It's okay. Stay. There it is. You're doing... You're doing more funky chicken. More funky is my chicken. I'm going to take my round, dip it in water, come in and thin my paint enough so that it will flow off the round brush. Wait. If you'll notice here, what I do is I bring this in and then I roll. Hold on. Wait a minute. That's step eight. We're on step seven, right? Uh, eight. No. We'll go back and look. Pretty sure 
pretty sure. We just did step seven as far as I know. Because I, I did beak eye, and then I did a bunch of waddle model, which we just finished, which is seven. Oh, maybe it's seven. Yeah, I think we're getting ready to move oh, on. Oh, you know what? I skipped ahead and didn't do the beak details. Okay, that's what I thought happened. I was like, wait a minute, this reference photo looks Because the off. reference photo was wrong, so I skipped there. ahead. So, no, no, this is what it's supposed to be. This is the reference photo it's supposed to be, and you're supposed to do detail on the beak. Okay. And you moved ahead to do some feathers. All right, so we got to go the opposite way. I don't know how you're going to fix that. I'll let you fix that as you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work it out. It's a beak and a, it's beak and feathers. So, I mean, like, they can be interchangeably done. It's not like it's, you know. Beacon feathers. I'm going to finish this. I think you over waddled. <laughs> huh? You may have over waddled. I don't think, I don't know now. I don't know. It threw me off. But you know what? <laughs> I'm going to add little feathers around here. Just the beginnings of them, little flicks. We'll finish off this segment and then we'll go to the next one. And then hopefully we can fix it in the mini book. <laughs> well, I think we're going to combine. I'm going to, I'm going to put up a step eight here. Okay. Because that's really kind of, you've blended into step eight here. So let's just go give them this little step because look up there. See? Okay. And then I'll go there back go. and beak. I don't know. Yeah. See, you can see that we're doing this in step eight. We'll get those little. Just on the toe of my brush, making short little feathers. These are like little pin feathers. This one's live. <laughs> I know I sometimes re -re record and stream. Well, you know, <laughs> I think it's uh, uh, these two steps. Just all it is is that seven and eight. These two steps are mushy, mushy. Yeah, seven and eight got a little mushy, mushy, but that's okay. Because seven, eight, nine. It's true. Seven, eight, nine. There's a conspiracy between seven and eight, for sure. <laughs> and they don't like nine, for sure. <laughs> and it got real, for it sure. Did. But you know what? Nine proved to be the only solid one anyway. So when we get to nine, we're going to be solid. It's pretty much seven and eight. They're the screw ups here. Okay. Are you guys okay at home? You following along all right? Maybe we should talk to seven and eight's parents. Tell them that they should get it together. Call them into the office. Be like, what's with you two numbers here, huh? Seven walks around like it's a prime number or something. I'm just like feathering now. What I'm I'm self soothing with feathers. <laughs> that is what is happening. I'm gonna add a little more red to my waddle just because I'm here and it's freaking me out. I take a little of my waddle okay. color back. Let's re waddle here. Let's make that. A little bit. Having a little cat red out. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at me go. Seven and eight are fighting. Okay, I'm going to dry all of this, sip my coffee. John's going to figure out what step to put up. And then yeah, I. I already know. I got it. Do ready. we just leave it here and I do the beak? Or do I uh, do the beak? Oh, and you got to do the beak here. I'll do the beak here. I'm going to dry here. real quick okay. and then do the beak. All right. All right. So we got to get. We're going to get her caught back up on the steps. So. Seven was beak, eight was flowers, or no flowers, feathers. Uh, yeah. You earth creatures and all of your different plumage. So feathers and beak got reversed a little bit, so we're just going to finish the beak here, and then we're going to move on to the next step. You still using the round? I am probably still using the round. Uh, I'm checking the beak details just to see that I've got the right colors. Yeah, it's the round TAS. It's yellow, ochre, burnt sienna, titanium, white, Mars, black. So we really haven't changed colors. No, that's why everything I was like, is okay. It's okay. It really is. I'm going to take a little bit of my Mars, black, and burnt sienna and kind of make a deep chocolate and not panic. And John is helping me. Well, it's like we already got all the stuff over on this end done. So you're good. You just got to paint that little beaky thing, which is probably a lot harder than what I have to do, which is just push some buttons. And, I don't know. Uh, uh, look at this. Ah, the camera's going crazy. I'm going to add little tiny, little short strokes, kind of creating a texture right. here. Camera was running away on. 
And then I'm going to come up here and add a little, a few little short strokes, kind of adding a little texture up here. I'm going to get into black. Do the steps say 16 by 20? Did I put 16 by 20 in the steps? I'm sorry if I did. Oh, uh, no, that's a cow. Oh. The cow is 8 by 8. Yes, the cow the is, cow eight, is by eight, 8 by 8. I must have left 16 by 20 in that graphic step, so sorry about that. Oh, no. I'll go it's back so back. much going on that day. Put a it different a... thumbnail in there. So we're trying to get our live live where our, our recorded and live streamed are at, and it's a journey. You know, because... But it's 8 by 8. Live. That word means what it says. And it's the worst when we have a video is wrong and it does well. Because then it's like, well, then everybody thinks this is what we do. Uh, of course. Adding a little bit of cat yellow ochre, titanium white into the mix I had over here, which had a little burnt sand on Mars black into it already. So you might not know that was already there. And I just want you to know that that's in that mix. Just brushing back, creating these little. <sighs> or beak. The beak. The beak. That looks like the reference photo. There we go. I think we're there now. Is this? Well, yeah. when you finish the beak, you got to finish. Are you done beacon? I think I might add a little and a highlight along here. Tap, 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 kind of blend it out. Really into the feathers of birds. It's so weird. All right. Stepped. There Sorry we about go. the cow. It's okay. Do, do, do. Oh. <laughs> Now, Let's see. I'll see if anything's come yellow, up since I last looked and we're already lost anyways. Yellow Anybody ochre. still with us? Oh, yeah. Titanium white and Mars black. Boop, boop, boop. <sighs> and let's see if we can get... And look at that. We have another step ready. It looks like you lightened some chicken feathers this time around. <laughs> I think there are live show questions, and my, my, my Skype is broken. Oh, it could be, because there's lots of questions up here that I've been reading. Yeah, I think, guys, what's happening is my Skype is broken to my team, and that's why I don't see you working and doing that. What's happening? Oh, that's terrible. I feel so bad. What are we on? Uh, nine? Yeah, nine. Nine? This is step nine. We're finishing some feathers, right? Yeah, this is the feather highlights. Step feather nine. Feather highlights. Let's look at our feather highlights. Your notes. See, I can see your notes. Yeah, that's why I did them. And look, it didn't even help me. Sure it did. See? Uh, cat's tongue eight again and the round. So it's the filbert and the round again on this step. Uh -huh. Lighter version of the feather colors that we made from earlier. So cad yellow, burnt sand, and titanium white, Mars black, um, and yellow ochre. Which one did you have on the step? What colors did you have on the step? Uh, I didn't yellow see. ochre, titanium white, Mars black. Yellow ochre, titanium white, Mars black. Would you like to see? Yes. Because that's what I got to follow. Okay. That's what I need to follow. Oop. I think also I pulled up my old notes, not the new updated notes. So there's many like. Oh, this is one of those things where we're gonna we're gonna work on as a team, making things better, <laughs> finding our way. Finding your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Ten chicken. No, we're on nine chicken. I'm gonna add a little grouping of feathers that Ten are chicken. lighter than the ones underneath. I'm on the toe of the brush, and I'm just flicking outwards again, creating those individualized feathers. <laughs> Art by Glenn is like, you two are magical. 
We're magic something. I'm gonna you change guys my are water. magical Good for a little. Good time to change your water, guys. Putting up with this. Stretch. Things are fun. Even when they go wrong during your live show, you're fine because you're doing art. And that's so you're okay. You're okay. Yeah. Maybe your Skype doesn't load any well, questions and you're on February 5th. You're okay. The, I think one of the good things about our show is we never promised to be good at making videos. <laughs> we only promised that we were going to teach you how to paint. So. <laughs> Everyone's like, why if, don't you teach a YouTube class? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> we're not here to teach you how to YouTube. You got to go figure that out you your own. You should go to like us. Linus Tech Tips or somebody else. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people who will take your money to teach you YouTube out there. We're for free. Your channels. Yeah, but don't just go to the platform, do their training, and mm -hmm. ignore all the yahoos who will tell you. Because the truth is, if somebody... The yahoos just regurgitate the training. Yeah, if the yahoos could do it, they would do it for themselves because they can make that money there. But they can't, so they're doing it for somebody else. Just saying. Feeling about consultants. Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> Never take advice from somebody who isn't doing better than you. So let's just put it that way. Oh, that's terrible. You don't have. A I like Silverstone hogs. Carol Moore says because they crack each other up. So I guess that's a punchline. Freeze cinnamon as we do. I bead. I bead. <laughs> and that's funny if you saw the cute baby's breath video. I don't breathe. I bead. I love it when you make a video to give people advice about relaxing and then you don't spell anything correctly. I think that's it. Particularly. Part of the reason why this is tough is that my, my controls are all off and unintuitive today. So down is left. Uh, up is up. I'm going to do my round now. Yeah, it's, it's got my left and up and right and down are reversed. So it's like. Making your way in the world today, cause everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries, traveling a lot. I'm fine. Uh, I'm gonna fetch. add some high highlights there, like little feathers. Man, that, huh? This you got a lot of continents in your in your name, so I'm gonna guess Svetch. I'm not sure which of these are silent. Svetch. Yes. So it couldn't, none of them be silent. Uh, two questions. What do you do with your paintings? And will you ever put your artwork in your own gallery? Um, I sometimes sell studies now, but for the most part, I keep everything. They are stored. Not appropriately. And yeah, I might someday put everything up on display for people to just check out if they wanted to. I don't know that they would want to. I'm going to come along here with my white and kind of make a nice little edge. We're hoping to wall. have a place to hang them soon. Yeah. There's actually some stuff a brewing. Stuff a brewing, but it's not done, so we can't say it's, anything. It's coffee because it's two twenty, and I need more coffee. You do coffee need more pie, coffee. Pie, coffee I'm having a nice time, but yeah, I do need more coffee. And I'm not cooking through this. You know, I'm trying to be chill through this process, and this I'm gonna a, dry this and sip my coffee. It's a long waddled chicken. There we go. She didn't give me too much warning on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get some more coffee going. I think soon, so I might uh, leave you to the cinnamon and the chicken while I go make coffee. Coffee time. Oh yeah. Don't forget to thoroughly dry. Check our website for all the reference materials. Um, don't forget to do the human things like comment, subscribe, share. If you'd like to learn more about supporting us, you can go to theartsherpa.com forward slash patron and learn more about how you can help make free videos possible like this. What are we doing next? Uh, look. Is this, is this a step? It's a step. You're oh, on a step. Oh. My favorite step. The Which, step. What I am best at. Ten step? <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, cadmium yellow That's medium, yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, titanium white, and Mars black. I see a chicken eye. It's a chicken eye. So I'm going to use the mix from earlier, which was a little cadmium yellow. I guess there's some burnt sand and Mars black in there and a lot of titanium white. And I'm going to get that again over here. And come in the corners. I'm using a number one monogram liner. 
This is dinged up. I got to get some more. I got to make some. So this one is just a, a monogram liner. It's not as long as a script liner. It's just a little bit shorter, but it's longer than a detail brush and tends to come to a good point. I'm going to come here to the inside of the eye here. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm going to go over to uh, my Quinn, uh, my mix from the Waddle earlier, and I'm going to add a lot of white. I'm going to be adding all the white. And kind of come underneath the eye. God, let's see the curtains move. <sighs> Does the rooster have a name? The patrons did name the rooster. So uh, patrons on my channel um, get to see paintings early, and then they also get to name them for the mini books, which is not going to be fun to fix this time. <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of a highlight there. I'm going to come in and grab a little of my magenta. I do want a shadow, so that's that's the balance, right? Finding that space. And it coming out. I got a little yellow in there because I'm being cheeky. I'm being cheeky with it. Playing out a little bit of that cinnamon. I see them for real. Maybe someday he'll surprise us, and that would be a great day. That would be very cool. Uh, Ken A has brought up the point that all my birds turn out angry or judgy. They do, man. Uh, my birds all have tood. I don't know if that means I secretly have tood because all art is self portraiture, or that means that I just like to drop a brow a bit. <laughs> it's hard to know, man. Get a little bit of my burnt sienna. My Mars black here. And I come under the, the line of the eye. There's the judgy. He judgy. There he went. He went judgy. I come around. I also age up children when I do children portraiture, which is why I don't do children portraiture. I always like I like to add like two years. Which is just because I keep elongating features, which ages them up. If ever you're wondering why your children portraiture is aging up, you're elongating the features. What's the difference between a natural bristle brush and a natural chunking pure bristle brush? Uh, quality, Joni. So bristles are any old peg, uh, any old hair off the peg. Chunking bristles uh, come from a particular region and a particular hog. They tend to be extra long and they have a curve. And if they're interlocked, it means that the brush maker took the time to form the brush where the natural flow of the hair tends to go in towards a point. And there's not a lot of brush makers that are great at that. But when you get a good brush like that, it's just a joy. So that's the difference. I hope I answered that question. I'm still using the monogram liner, yeah. I've always been on this, this whole step. Okay. Okay. I've always been. I've never not been. I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm just going to very carefully kind of come in and add a little bit of a shadow where the lid kind of touches this eye. Add up a bit. I like to add those little details. Ah, <sighs> this looks more fun than watching the blizzard out my window. Mr. Rooster is looking good. Thank you, Kathy Soul. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys being here. I know you have choices in your YouTube viewing, and I just appreciate uh, uh, Super May, uh, Supernatural May was talking about how, you know, she really likes what I do, and I so appreciate that you guys like what I do. I'm making an orange. I'm taking my cad yellow and my cad red, and I'm mixing them together, even with my fussy little detail brush. I'm going to come to the forward face of the eye because this is a yellow orange. And then I'm going to get into my just cad red. And on the back of the eye, get my cad red. 
So it starts to create a little light in the forward part of the eye, which is what I like to do. Sherp eyes are the best eyes. Hopefully your eyes are the best eyes too. I like how I do eyes. And feathers and scales. All the things. I like to paint all the things. I'm going to add a little black to my brush. I got a book in the mail today that May probably would enjoy. Oh, did you get the? Did you get it today? Uh, I don't know which book. You want to hand it to me? I know which one it is because I saw it in the cart. Oh, this one? Yes. I got another one that's coming in. It's gonna be. You want to show them? Oh, hold in on a the second. mail today. <laughs> we got, you know, just in case. We need it. Because <laughs> our neighbor's super creepy. Anything happens to us, <laughs> say it's our neighbor. Like if we disappear offline, you go look at him. There's something not right there. Over here. All right. It's not even a contest. You win hands down over anyone on YouTube, says Linda. Thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate that. And it's weird. It's just I work real hard is what it is. And I love that that translates into your guys' experience. And that experience turns into those compliments. And I really appreciate that. Like, really, really. I'm going to take a little bit of white and kind of put it on the inside here over the off white and then let's kind of add a bit there get back into my eyelash i think i need better better pin feathers around i know i've got a flower there but i just want to fill in so that um I have cameras. Don't worry. Amethyst. You have what? Amethyst is like, get cameras up. I'm like, I got them. We do. We do. Camera. 15 months, Laura Patton. Woo. Thank you. Congratulations. Let's see. I know I'm going to have flowers there, but I just want to make sure that there's nice and feathers. I feel like I need to bring them down over the eye a bit too. There we go. I think we're good there. Uh, Cinnamon, do you, do you resize? I have with you for about five years now. Oh, do I realize that I've been with you for about five years now? Actually, yeah, I do. I do. Um, it, it's, I do get to know everybody's names, and I do get to know your stories. Um, I, not that I stalk you on Facebook, but I do follow on Facebook, and sometimes I'm very aware of what's going on in your life. Sometimes I'm not. Facebook isn't a reliable communicator, but you know. Look at the step. Tammy Mio, Bird Sienna. Uh, Thalo Green. I'm going to say we're doing green leaves right now. You do know that you're doing green leaves. Look at that. Green leaves. And I'll put out the Thalo Green now. Hopefully it hasn't um, gummed up too much on the other colors. And I will be using my cat's tongue, which is the pointed filbert. I'm misting my... Um, palette just because it's dry in here today. So I'm going to be using this and we're going to be doing a stroke that goes like this. It's a touch pull stroke. So I'm going to just demo it without paint. You're going to press in, curve, pull, release. Press in, curve, pull, release. When you want smaller ones, you're going to do less of a, less of a touch and pull. See, so if I want a big leaf, I press hard. And if I want a little leaf, I press lightly. We're going to start with um, my base uh, green color. So a lot of people don't like phthalo green. Uh, in landscapes and things because it's such a saturated, vibrant, uh, overwhelming green. I always knock it back with another color like burnt umber or burnt sienna. 
and that's my base green and it lets me pull it up into vibrant greens where I don't have to have a series of greens in my palette. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo green and my burnt sienna and make this deep foresty green. I'll load it up on the brush and hopefully it's uh, fairly thickly loaded. All right, so you see it in the belly there. And first, I'm going to come here and put a touch and a pull. See how those are small? I see. Might add some here. Let's come here, and I think I'm going to kind of curve them this way. So imagine a line kind of curving this way. Bring some out that way. Oh, thank you. And you can see they sort of scale up. Scaling up. And I just pull those in. I don't need to take them too far because I know I've got a big rose right here. Another big rose up top. I am going to bring some over here. Even though I know those are coming that way. Because I kind of want some dimensionality there. Whenever I want to take the next color up, I'll wipe off a little bit. And then I will add yellow into the mix. That's how we get the next green up. Is I add yellow. And I think... I want to, um, John, I think I'm going to dry it a little bit before I put the next layer. I'm going to dry a little bit before I put the next layer. A little. Okay, fine. If you want to dry, we can dry. It's your show. Not like I run anything. So we'll dry because that's what you're supposed to do. Dry. And that's uh, probably because she doesn't want the next lighter layer to pick up the little green darkness spots in there well so. on top of that i noticed that my brush had been really wet and the paint went out really wet and i knew that it wasn't gonna Ooh. let me get on top of it so if i had to dry it just a little bit to get the mm -hmm. so you could get the little the, the lighter to stick yeah top. otherwise it was going to be problematic and sometimes with experience you will start to notice things early and you'll be like uh-oh now sometimes on lighter leaves you can bring some lighter leaves out the delicate leaves as we go in, see how we pull that in. Any word on the Little Rock Retreat redo? So many words, Laura Patton. So many words. You should check out. Actually, the best thing to do is probably email support at theartshirt.com with all your questions because we have so much going on there. Lots of options, lots of things to know. Um, but yeah, we've, there's a lot of good stuff for you to check out. Uh, and we have good things happening and new stuff to announce every week or so maybe All in a right. week we'll have more information i'm going to continue to add little leaves here well there we go the chicken's face looks so real says anna and acosta is this the larger cat's tongue i missed it yeah this is the eight um, you can do this with any filbert though um, if you look it's about the size of my thumb my nail polish is all chipped off like that guys um, it's about the size of my thumb, about the width of this particular filbert, pointed filbert, my cat's thumb. Now I'm going to add a little yellow into my green. And this is before I add any white. There we go. Now I can add white because you've got to add the yellow first to lighten it and then you lighten with the white. Wow, Peggy's from Trinidad, Tobago. Oh, hey. Hello, way Hello. over there. You live so far from us. Hello. <laughs> That's like continents away. <laughs> uh, uh, Ava said, I recommended you do a few beginner painters in, in uh, her group. And don't forget, I've got that beginner acrylic where to start course now. So they can just go into that, watch the five introductory videos and do the first time paintings. And 
High I'm five. doing that so we can get more people into Acrylic April. High five to all of our Australian viewers. I know I caught you earlier. It's a crazy time in Australia right now, isn't it? I think it's a crazy time everywhere. But yes, Australia has its whole lot of internal and external pressures happening. I meant like time of day, oh. not geopolitical time. Not like, <laughs> well, I'm not saying all that isn't going on for you. I just meant it's a weird time of day to watch the show. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I'm not trying to dive into the political <laughs> nature, of it, but yeah, they got a whole lot of stuff going on too. So everybody does kind of right now. <laughs> Although that's where we're at now, isn't it? <laughs> New Zealand seems to just have hobbits, and I want to go there. I don't think that's true. I think I New Zealand it's has true. its own stuff they going do. on, but it's just they're just not sharing with us. They I got think they're hobbits, secretive about so it. They won. They got mm -hmm. the hobbitses, so they won anyway. And uh, anybody with hobbits wins. Everybody from New Zealand seems to be very chill and cool. Hobbits are better than the rest of us. You know, you know what comes from Australia that's awesome? Mm. A jazza. That that's is an true. Australian thing. It is a very Australian thing. I'll be thing. back. I'm going to get coffee. I owe. Oh, I'm going to have to do a whole apology video of jazz. <laughs> Though jazz have ruined my life recently. So. so maybe an apology and a, hey! You didn't mean to. He just mentioned that teaching long form YouTube videos is dead on YouTube. <laughs> Probably true. It did like explode my chest. But I'm still going to apologize to him because he's lovely and I appreciate it. All right. I'm just checking the. Tools I'm going to use in the next video. All right, messy roses. We're doing some messy roses again. Um, as we do these, hopefully you guys will get better at it. If you're trying to understand how stuff is built and value and stuff like that, I highly recommend uh, joining the patronage and doing the drawing class with us. And that's just because that's going to teach you value more than anything else if you want to kind of get into that. Um, I've been working on some new weird stuff for my short form. So if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, maybe even here, maybe over on the watercolor channel, a little weird short bits of instruction, like a little. <sighs> Lulabelle says, I'm the height of a hobbit, but are your feet the size of a hobbit's feet? Because that's, that's the real, that's the real thing. I, did you put up the step? Yeah. Because I'm doing coffee, right? I'll do the same cup. But it's, it's the I lost a rope or found a horse cup. It's just big. So it's really hard for me to judge how to do the coffee so in the okay, cup. I'll go watch this. No, it's okay. It's just hard to know how, how much coffee to put in the giant cup of coffee. You say that, but that's... I do everything by eye. <laughs> let's, hi, let's make some, let's make some coffee together. <laughs> let's do that. I don't have a spoon. How will I stir it? Honestly, if you guys weren't watching the back of my brush, I would start with the back of my brush, which is not advised for your health, but I do. But if John saw me do it right now, he would be so freaked out. So I'm not going to do it. Also, palette knife is also a good coffee stir. <laughs> but you're never supposed to put paint in your mouth, so don't do it. Do you have a start? Do you bring in, a spoon? In the words of the sheriff in Nottingham, with a spoon. With a spoon! So it's Starbucks Pike's Peak on a French press with a little bit of soy silk. Uh, I, like people always wonder, Starbucks French press. I make the French press. We make it at home. We just get the beans and we do the French press. And then it's uh, vanilla soy silk and um, no sugar. Num. Now we're ready to go? Yep. Now we can step. Okay, we can step. We're on step 12. Step 12 is wonderful. So we're going to do some flowers. And the flowers really are the sort of multi-layered uh, little experience that we've got going on. What? Hmm? You got a chicken. That's all you got is a chicken. There you go. That's what you wanted. That was silly. You ready? Yes. So I'm going to start these dark and then layer up on them, okay? Takes a couple layers to get today's really nice cabbage roses. And let's begin with a little bit of cad red and quinacridone magenta. And we will start up here. I'm going to kind of face this back. And I'm making little circles. OK, 
base is going to be kind of right there. Maybe get a little more cat right into the mix as I come out. Mm. Oh, I should have dried. You went dry? I will have a second. I oh. should have dried. I'm going to add a little more cat right here, and then I'm going to dry. But this one goes over the top of that one. So I'm going to dry right here just because the green is pulling up, and I don't want the green oh, in that mix. Oh, that's what was happening. I didn't, mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't tell what was going on. All right, you do that. I'm going to dry. Yeah. So if, you're, if, you, if you find that you're picking up green... And you just go ahead and do a little extra dry here because you don't want any of those under colors to pick up and change, you know, the uh, the color of the color you're trying to make. Because green will make it turn gray and icky. That's not a good thing. It'll mute it out and thus vibrantize your thing. So, yeah. There she goes. There I go. Back into the fray. I'm going to get a little bit of my too wet on the brush. Sometimes you'll catch that where you're like, oh, it's too wet. Get a little cad red into my mix with the Quinn Magenta. And I'm going to put three little petals off that way. Add some little blooms in that way. Tuck in some here. You just tuck them where you want them. Mm. You tuck them where you think they go. Don't want to put any more over here because I like the greenery and I don't want to lose. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. I have that in there. Just the basic other flowers. Got this. And I can come in with a little bit of white. Make a little circle. Oh, those words Coming are around. never spoken in this house. What? I think it's time for decaf. For me? No. <laughs> Paula says it's time for decaf for her. And I was like, oh. That's okay, oh. Paula. You yeah. may make that personal choice for you. Just so make <laughs> <laughs> We just better not introduce any anti-caffeine legislation. God. Yeah. <laughs> If they do, that's when I'm running for office. <laughs> that's when you will revolt. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and I see the world through a pro wrestling mind, so that's how that would be. I think that's in the seat. <laughs> I think that's you know <laughs> I mess. Canada's got the you know, they they got the beautiful wrestler. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know, France is doing pretty good. They got a they got a looker up there too. I don't know who you're talking about. The presidents of states. Oh, wrestlers. Well, if, oh, because they if, got good looking people yeah, in office. Oh, cause, okay. Because that's you know, like, of course, Canada and France has got you know, they got the style happening. I mean, my mom used to be like, when I was doing something she thought was bad manners, she's like, if you were married to a senator, would you do that? And I was like, why would I be married to a... Like, one, why wouldn't I be the senator? Two, why would I be married to a senator? And three, given all the rules I clearly would have to follow if I had to eat at the White House, it sounded like a sucky job. <laughs> so, I never did it. All right, as we go forward, I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my yellow and cad red into my mix, if you guys uh -huh. can see. See, they're like, how would you get the chicken to wear the flowers? I'm like, get. They did it on their own. They just... You know, it's a thing. You got to get them in the right mood. Chickens adorn themselves with roses and feathers, all sorts of stuff. If you had any trouble with this, you could use my little round brush, but I haven't even gone into it. I may have to for the center, though. All right. 
I'm going to rinse out. I have one cup of clean water left. We're almost done, guys. I'm kind of bummed. It is true. Almost done. So I'm going to get my round brush. I don't know if it... I can't see the graphics. I don't know if John pops it up or whatever. I can change it. Okay. Round brush. It now says round. Look. I'll show you. I'll show you. you see, I move the little chat. May Ooh. Supernatural's like, no de decaf for this uh, coffee snob. <laughs> so you guys show graphic. Okay. Oops, not too big. I'm taking a little bit of my yellow over here to the side. Maybe get a little cad red into it. Maybe a little white. And come in and kind of make little... You know, like little highlight marks, like it's the petals of the roses. I'm going to touch a little bit of white yellow to it. Bit curling around. I have a bunch of furniture that I did this to mm. to make it look less ugly. It's really pretty. Really, really pretty. What do you guys yeah. think of that? Look at that. That's our flowers. Aren't they fun? Those are. They're just so chunky and wonderful and delicate and terrific. Now, we have one more step. You do. Mm -hmm. I know what that step is. Do you? You know what that? I know what that step is. It's the white lining. I'm going to dry my chicken, though. Dry okay, your chicken. Okay, you dry your chicken while we're doing this. You're just going to need some fluid white paint for this. And you're going to get that pretty little chicken up there. And, but you got to make sure that it's uh, it's all the way... Uh, dry so that everything turns out okay. Oh, and you're not going to use round. I think this time she's going to be using a detail, if I'm correct. And if not, we'll change that later. So that's taking long. She's just really making sure it's thoroughly dry because uh, as you do the white lining, oh, as you do the white lining, you're, it's going to pick up the paint below. So. I have to answer three things. Okay. Answer. I'm Belina Mom. I've just recently discovered you two are terrific, by the way. If you were perfect, I would never watch you because I would feel like I could never measure up and find your own style. Well, that is true. But I will tell you, even artists that you perceive as perfect, I'm sure if you went in their studio, they could pull out five or six paintings where they were like, ah, uh, this went weird. They just may not show that on their curated style, uh, on their curated show. Um, earlier I was asked if the initial mix of the flower was red and black. It wasn't. It was the cadmium red and the quinacridone magenta was the first mix on the rose. And this one we're going to be doing with a monogram liner. And then, oh, Super May, I knew you were saying about yourself. I was just generally weighing in on coffee. 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 Are, are you looking you at don't the emojis have of our emojis? Feeling about coffee. Sometimes I'm me in the show, and sometimes John is me. <laughs> it's just this. So I love this stage of the painting because these little details pull the whole thing together and just make it, what? The first part is I'm going to get my monogram liner wet, and I'm going to load a little bit of my fluid paint. What is this? This is golden fluid white acrylic. Um, I have it in my Amazon store if you're looking for one. I think I put the two ounce instead of four ounce in there. Uh, it is just really pigmented, flowing acrylic, and it can be very nice for this technique. I like to have white around. I like to have black around. I like to have all the different colors. I'm going to come here. And what I do is I find, this is, a, this is one of the few techniques that I bring to you guys that I did in my fine art. Uh -uh. I don't know what it, fine art means. I do know what it means, but sometimes I'm like, eh, fine artish, sort of. Ugh. Tammy says they always had two o'clock coffee at mom's. I think we have coffee oh at six, eight, 
10, <laughs> noon, 2, 4, and sometimes 6. And my mom and I used to meet every day for chocolate coffee at my mom's house. Back when John and I were first dating. We did the chocolate coffee. Remember the chocolate coffee? Oh, yeah. No. So I'm just looking for little edges that I can highlight and define with my white lining. And it kind of makes this sort of delicate little antique little rose, doesn't it? Love how that works. Yeah. Like not having coffee is the one thing that can just throw me completely off. If I had competitors that were trying to take me out, all they'd have to do is interrupt the coffee supply. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That would be... They don't really need to send their fans to come harass me. Would... Just interrupt my coffee supply. It's yeah. very effective. You'll our never have to worry about me again. Yeah, our channel would grind to a halt. There'd halt. be nothing. <laughs> There'd be no more. No more. Look at those gorgeous little roses as they pull together. Um... Cinnamon furniture sounds awesome. I wish I thought I'd do that. Maybe I'll put something in my head now. Thank you so much. It's going to be great. I love to paint old. I love to paint furniture. You know those little folding chairs from Walmart? They're black and padded and just ugly. Just painted right on it and then sealed it. Just huh. these flowers all over it. Because I was like, ah, these are so ugly. And then I made them pretty. Let's take a little of this white paint and come along our beak. And I'm going to dot a little line up and down. See, I just barely edge that. Isn't that nice? Some beak lighting. Some beak lighting. Let's come along the back here and kind of. You know, if this was an anime, there'd be a shine and a bing. Bing. I say, I say, I say. <laughs> you know that super reflective, shiny bing that you get whenever a glint catches. Do you remember the, the chicken line? hawk and the rooster? Oh yeah. Yeah. That was some of my favorite highbrow discussion in early cartoons. Is just really fun. Kind of like a Tennessee Williams play for kids and with chickens. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what I'm doing is I'm just catching a little highlight on the waddle. I'm That's catching a... little bits and so that it looks like the waddle's a little bright. Is that a, is that a waddle or is that a crown? That's a crown. I don't know, it's a like comb a, or whatever. Probably comb. Comb. Um, it's a mo chicken, not a mohawk. Mo chicken. Mo chicken. Mo chicken. This is mo chicken, and you're ready for. <laughs> Got the, that chicken's yeah. like, you looking at me, huh? The chicken is huh? kind of like, don't start <laughs> nothing, and it won't be nothing. <laughs> I did an eagle once. He's like, I haven't seen an eagle like him until I watched Peacemaker. And I'm like, oh, that's what I channeled is that eagle from Peacemaker. You did. <laughs> do you remember my space eagle? Yeah, I do. He's all, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the Peacemaker chicken at the intro. Peacemaker I mean, has... my, my, my eagle. I'll be sad to see Peacemaker go. No, I mean, I think he'll be back next season. They seem to all have a limited timeline in that job. I mean, I don't think there's a long lifespan working for Amanda Waller, but. Okay, so the actress that plays Amanda Waller in uh, Peacemaker and on The Suicide Squad also does uh, How to Get Away with Murder. And, like, I think about, like, what she's like at home a lot. Like, probably more than is healthy. I don't want her to be afraid. Like, if she's just sitting there happily painting with me at home, right? <laughs> she's like, wait, what? Not in a creepy, scary way. But I just think about you a lot because you play some roles. Like, you get in there and you're like, I'm going to play some roles like I'm Al Pacino. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. Like, characters that are, are, are not, like, necessarily endearing and are strong and powerful and unapologetic. I really like her choices. It is almost 10 p.m. in South Africa. Hello, South Africa. Good evening to you. I hope everything is going well. That is like continents and oceans away. So very far from us. And yet, here we are on our little rock flying through space. Just us. 
Well, unless are NASA you is sure? to be believed. <laughs> are, <laughs> no, are you they haven't positive? said anything else. And if they're not going to say anything else, then maybe they shouldn't have said anything in the first place. NASA's the wrong group to ask. You know, their job is to get humans into and out of space. I also think about things. Space Force a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there she is. SETI. <sighs> I, would, I would go with SETI. They got a better chance right, of finding Look at that. There we roostered up. You did. Did you rooster up? Let's let's sign it. I did kind of drag my feet today, kind of going chill, kind of going calm, just to let you guys kind of paint along. Um, I just wanted you to have a nice time today. It was a nice time. I'm guessing that we're going to be just shy of two hours on this one because I heard the, the, the sounds going. Oh, the clock? Yeah. Da, 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 da. I want to put it on Beatles mode next. Oh, I'd like that. Yeah, just under two hours. Wonderful. Look at that. I mean, I probably could have whipped through it in an hour and a half. Probably. But, but here's the thing. Did you not totally get to see how it was done? And even with our weird little back. Oh, thank you, the bug. That's a corgi. That's a shortcake. Shortcake is evil, but also cute. Okay. Before I go, I have to tell a shortcake story. Here's my shortcake story. So many. The shortcake is a hooligan. <laughs> yes. Like a, a soccer hooligan. hooligan. Yes. In, in another life. Rugby hooligan. That's um, it, rugby football <laughs> hooligan. All the hool hooligans. this has has hockey hooligan spirit. Like you know, your hooligans. That's the dog, and is always like on the move and stuff, and um, getting into stuff. Sometimes we need to contain her because she's a lot for herself. <laughs> for herself, for all of us, we're always like pulling things out of her <laughs> mouth. She's always coughing things out of her mouth. So I needed to get her back in the kitchen, and she didn't want to follow me to the kitchen. So I got a treat because. Nothing motivates that dog like food. Like food is everything. Like, not prey drive, not just food drive. Just all food yes. drive all the time. Not pets, not love, not community pack, food. So I have the little dog official treaty and I'm like carrying it. I'm like going, going, going. And she's following me. And then she realizes, because she's so smart that she's being led into the kitchen. She doesn't want to go in the kitchen, but she wants the treat. And if she didn't find the strength to do a leap, <laughs> like she's never <laughs> left before and go in the air, not harm me take the treat right out of my mouth and then run the other way and go under my easel here. Little corgi ears laid back like <laughs> she's going to be the fastest thing and the little, little feet going across that because she can't turn. They're like there's no traction for those paws and once you get the full, you know, momentum of that dog, she's not cornering on a, on a hardwood floor. She just sort of slides around. The front paws are going. The rear legs are splayed out to get the proper slide going. It's a thing to see. So Donna wants to know if I'm going to do a pig too, since I've done a cow and a rooster. And I feel like I need to. I know I painted a lot of pigs, but I feel like we need a pig and at least a sheep and maybe a dog. Donkey. Hmm? Donkey. A donkey, some people think. I think. I mean, I would say horse, but. You've done horses. Donkeys are underrepresented. <laughs> oh, it's been a good day. Guys, Acrylic April's coming up. Be ready for that. If you're wanting to do Acrylic April, but you're still. Um, kind of working it out try to do all of the beginner acrylic course all the way through and get some more one and two hoop paintings in so you can paint along with us this year i'd love to have you if you've been looking at like kicking it into gear if you're like fully in your one and two hoot space you got to do acrylic april with me this year it's transformative i'm going to show you my first daily painting Ooh. it's not good not cute I like but it'll, it'll show you where i went and the transformation and how it changed and how it helped me as an artist even though I had a lot of art skills before in a particular way, how I became a much more able to do this live in front of you with no edits. I'm not saying good videographer, but like able to paint like this. Um, Look, we did how that this. Happened. It's like, this is awesome. Yeah. We did this live and we taught some live. people. We did it live and we taught some people. We'll keep adding farm animals to it as we go. I am enjoying, aren't you? Mm -hmm. All right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon.